Well, thank you. Um, before, really before I begin, uh, I think that we would be remiss um, to be in this space talking about this topic and not take a moment to remember Tom Alberg, without whom um, virtually nobody would be in this room. So I just, for those of us who knew Tom, it is a, his passing was a great loss and um, this is his place. So uh, thank you for indulging me and in, in letting us remember him. So that, this is a, it was a hard act to follow. You guys, usually I'm the hard act to follow, but uh, so I'll, I'll try. So uh, my name is Laura Ruderman. I am the CEO of the Technology Alliance. The Technology <laughs> Alliance was actually founded in 1996, 97-ish, depending on who you talk to, the minutes for January 1997 say, and now concludes the first official board meeting of the Technology Alliance. And it was founded by Bill Sr., Tom Alberg, John Stanton, uh, the presidents of the U and WSU. There is a second uh, big, institute, big uh, college in Washington State that does a lot of research, although not necessarily in the, the ICT field. But it was founded by, by those folks, Ed Fritzke from Immunex, who looked around and said, we think this innovation economy thing is gonna be a thing. <laughs> And while that seems obvious now, uh, if you think back to, as you guys have been bringing us back, if you think back to the mid 90s, Microsoft, you know, people around here knew about Microsoft because they were watching all those Miatas come across 520. Um, but Amazon had only just started selling books. Google was not yet a company. And Mark Zuckerberg was in middle school. So if you look at the tech landscape, we had that. If you look at the Washington state economy, it was really built on agriculture, airplanes, which was mostly a manufacturing back then, less innovation, although I hope there's nobody from Boeing here. And oh my God, what are we gonna do about the timber and fishing industries because of the spotted owl listing? You had people committing suicide out on the peninsula and, and that was the, the, the Washington state economy. And so this group of people was a little bit more forward thinking uh, as the group that we just heard from than, uh, than it might appear today. So they looked around and they said, okay, well, what does it take to be a hub of the innovation economy? And you've heard some of it. It takes an educated workforce, it takes research capacity, and it takes an entrepreneurial climate. And they, so they also looked around at places that were a little ahead of us back then. Uh, they went to Research Triangle, they went to the Bay Area, and they went to Boston. And they said it also takes a very conscious coming together of the elected officials, particularly at the state level, and the business community, and the research institutions. So they formed the Technology Alliance, which is built really to bring together those three communities, the elected officials, the research, the research institutions, and the business community to work on issues around an educated workforce, increasing research capacity, and strengthening the entrepreneurial climate. That last one is a little bit amorphous. For us, it typically means access to capital, although we, the organization over its 26 years has done more than that. I took over uh, the Technology Alliance in, at the beginning of 2019, but I had known about the organization because I moved to Seattle in 1992 with the intention of being a stage manager. And so I got an internship at Seattle Repertory Theater. I uh, worked there for a season, and then I realized that stage managing was not going to support me in the manner in which I wanted to become accustomed. And so like every good out of work stage manager, I went to a temp agency and the temp agency person said, well, there's this very small multimedia company that's owned by Bill Gates. They're in Bellevue, uh, which I don't think I had heard of at that point. Uh, they need a group assistant, essentially a secretary. So I walked into the offices of a company that was then called Continuum that was going to that was working on, and the group was working on, you have to remember this was 1993, the group was working on what everybody back then thought was gonna be the next big thing, which was interactive television. 
And what was going to be the Tonight Show or the Roseanne Show? What was going to be the content of interactive television? And as I was telling this story a few weeks ago, I realized what our group did was basically invent YouTube. Because the idea was you were going to turn on your TV and there were you were going to be able to dig deeper into the content that you were seeing. And so we just the group decided that they were going to start with cooking and juggling. And they were going to do how-to videos. And this was the group that was going to figure out how to do that. And so like if you're watching a cooking show and they tell you to fold the dry, the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients, well, there would be a thing on the TV that you could click. And it would take you somewhere else that would give you a little demonstration about what the technique of folding. It's like, oh, we were inventing YouTube. Um, so. About two weeks after I was hired, it was announced that two-thirds of the company, including me, were being sold to Microsoft. And a month later, I was a Microsoft employee. And the reason was because the Microsoft board of directors, as the story was told to me, had decided it was a conflict of interest for Bill to own a company that was essentially in competition with Microsoft. So the group that was doing um, this and the group that was doing some video game design went to Microsoft. And the group that was doing photo collecting and editing continued as a company that you all know called Corbis. So as I was listening to your guys' stories, I always feel like, oh, I haven't really been in the, the ecosystem very long. But I was like, I really do have my own. I've been, I was at Microsoft between 1993 and 1998. And then I went off and did what I think is the most entrepreneurial thing you can do, which is I ran for the state legislature, and I won a seat. And thank you. And, um, and because I was 27, and I had worked at Microsoft, I was, in 1999, the technology legislator. Forget that what you were an English major. I was a psych major who, a double you know, psych and theater major. But because I had worked, at, spent four and a half years at Microsoft, I was the technology legislator. So that was 99. The Tech Alliance had started in 97. And so I was one of those legislators that they were talking to to figure out what did we have to do to support the ecosystem. One thing we had to do, for example, was change the way UW professors were paid because they're state employees, right? And so if you think about the you know, 90, 99, 2000, those early 2000s, there was a lot of money to be had anywhere else other than being a state employee bound by collective bargaining agreements. And so part of what we did in the legislature was work on how do we, how do we change that, that system. One of the early tech transfer, Lee Cheatham spent, and I spent a lot of time together figuring out how do you do this, this tech transfer thing. Then I left the legislature. People always say, well, why did you leave politics? And I was like, because I lost an election. Um, I ran for Secretary of State in 2004. I lost. Um, and then life, life happened. And in 2019, I needed a job. And it just so happens that uh, the first posting I saw was for, a, for, for the CEO job. So what does the Technology Alliance actually do to support the ecosystem? So we do a number of things. Um, we do things around, we started, by the way, the Alliance of Angels was, we, was incubated. We started and incubated the Alliance of Angels for 10 years and then spun it out. We started and incubated Ada Developers Academy and spun it out. We used to have an, a program called the Innovation Showcase, which was mentor, essentially pitch mentoring for uh, for founders. Today, uh, we do a number of things. The thing I want to talk about right now, because it's the most relevant to the folks in this room, is you know, you talked a lot about angel, angel investing, traditional VC. Well, there's this phenomenally fast growing category of investing called corporate venture capital. And it is growing by leaps and bounds, uh, as I probably have to tell nobody in this room. And it, got, it has gotten a bad rap in the past. Uh, you'll find some people in town who say, stay away from corporate venture capital. Uh, I hope that's changing. We did an event here actually about a month ago with Tim Porter and Lisa Nelson, co-founder of M12, talking about what it's like to work with uh, CVCs. One of the things that we like to do at the, at the Tech Alliance is find a definable problem that we are uniquely situated to uh, work on that everybody else is not working on. And so bringing more corporate venture capital dollars to Washington State is one of our big 
current projects. We recently got uh, almost a million dollar grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce to do just that. So I would encourage everybody in this room to watch for our Corporate Venture Connections series. Uh, and all of you who are investors, this is a good thing to send your portfolio companies to, because what we do is we have a public-facing uh, online 90-minute event with between two and four of the largest CVCs in the country, and we've had, we can name who we've had, but I won't take the time, in a particular sector. So we've done cloud computing, we've done AI, we've done advanced manufacturing, we've done life sciences, we've done healthcare. I'm missing one, but I'm not gonna try and think about it. Um, where you get to hear their views on the state of the sector, their investment theses, there's time for, there's a moderated discussion, there's time for Q&A, but the really important part of this is that you can apply for a meeting with the CVCs. And I will tell you a secret, those meetings are not competitive because we can't get founders, enough founders to apply. So we have never, we just don't have too many. We're never like, oh, there's eight companies we want to have meet with Honda Ventures, but we only have room for five. We're like, ooh, do you think we could squeeze this third one in? It's not great, but we don't want them to have done this for us. So really, um, apply. It's like four questions. We ask you four questions. Apply. And we, uh, two, of these have, two of these meetings have resulted in the first Seattle companies being accepted into J&J's Blue Knight, Blue Knight program. Um, there's a couple others that we think are close to funding. We've only been doing it for about a year and the funding cycles are long. But that is the thing that we are currently doing as we look ahead to what is the future of the ecosystem, what is the future that, thing that we can do at the Technology Alliance to support the ecosystem. We can continue to work on our educated workforce initiatives and our research capacity initiatives, which come talk to me afterwards. I'm happy. I love this organization. I'm happy to talk forever. But also for the folks in this room, please do look for those, um, those events because I think it is the thing that will diversify the kinds of funding that we bring in. It will bring in more funding and we will continue to take this ecosystem as far as it can go. I hope that that was an, I don't know, is there somebody after me? No, you told me I was bad and clean. Oh, all right. I, so I don't. So that that is it. We will we will take this this on. Please come talk to me about everything else that we are doing and how to get involved. But I loved being here when I moved here in '93. It was exciting to watch Microsoft grow and to grow a little with it. And it is now exciting. It was exciting to be part of supporting the ecosystem from the legislature. And now it is exciting to be doing it from this perspective. So thank you for letting me talk and. Uh, I will hand it off back to Pablo.